Good day and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about my favorite back exercise. I don't know why, but for some reason, it's always just given me a bit of a semi and I do love training my back. I also think one of the other reasons I enjoy it is because you can get a decent amount of weight on the bar, but a lot of people just simply butcher the exercise and it's just one of the most common lifts that a lot of people ego lift with. So today we're gonna clear up the form, make sure you're getting it right, and make sure also you stick around. I'm gonna go through the three common dick moves I see most people doing, and hopefully we can get them sorted and make sure you're on the right path to get stronger and hit more PBs. Let's get into it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you enjoy this video, then please then like it. If there is any other topics or, or exercise you'd like me to go over, make sure you drop a comment down below. And of course, don't be a creep. Let me know of your presence and subscribe. Sweet. Now it's done, let's move on. So, as I started that video off with a bit of subjectivity about how the bent over row makes me aroused, I wanted to give you a bit of objectivity. And why actually, you know, it's a really good exercise to make sure you've got in your program. And the first one is, it fully loads your posterior chain and not many exercises do that. Your posterior chain being your upper back, lower back, glutes and hamstrings. That means that it's then gonna carry over in other movements. It's gonna help you with your deadlift. It's gonna help you with your squat. Um, and it's just gonna make you very strong overall. Not to mention with the other objective benefit being, it's very easy to progressively overload and overload your back muscles. By the simple fact you use a lot of muscles, it means that you could probably load up the bar more than you probably would be able to do with different row variations. So it's gonna help you get stronger and you're probably gonna build other attributes like strong grip strength and so on and so forth. Glad I got that bit clear out of the way. Let's get on to talking about how to get the form right. Now you probably notice I'm starting with the bar in a rack. That's right, this is just gonna make your bent over row a lot easier and quite frankly, just save you a bit of energy so you may be able to get a couple more reps. Now of course, if you don't have a rack available, just do it from the floor. But for people who struggle with the conventional deadlift and just getting the bar up initially, doing it from a rack is just gonna make it a lot easier for you. So starting with step what? Getting in the right position to make sure we can row correctly. If you can't already RDR, then I would recommend that you go and get the RDR right first and then you move on to the bent over row. But I'm gonna show you how to pretty much hip hinge correctly and how we just need to get ourselves in that starting position. So I'm gonna show you a pronated grip by the way. You know, we are gonna go on and talk about supinated and pronated and the differences in a sec but I'm just gonna show you a pronated grip just to get started. Now the first thing we're gonna focus on is one, getting ourselves nice and close to the bar. You're then gonna want just a thumb length outside of your quad muscles, okay, in terms of your grip, okay? Hip width stance. So once you've got that nice grip, you're then gonna lift your bar up nice and straight with your legs. We're then gonna walk ourselves out. We're gonna keep our hip width stance, just like we would be if we are doing an RD out. And we're gonna focus on pushing our bum to the back of the room, making sure we're loading our hamstrings. Now once we're in that position here, we want to get our back angle sort of 20 to 30 degrees from the floor. This just means we're then gonna be in a great position to row and make sure we get plenty of range of motion. And that is step one. Now with step two, once we've got that nice starting position correct, we're gonna focus on bending that bar. And this is gonna help us with our elbow angle because we want our elbows around 45 degrees once we initiate the pull. And that just means that we're gonna be utilizing our lats. And for people who are wondering, bend the bar, where do you mean? Bend it outwards. You see the way my elbow's coming in? It's just gonna make sure that we're in a nice powerful position to row effectively and use them lats. So that's step two. So now we know we're bending the bar and we're really trying to get them elbows at 45 degrees. Step three is all about making sure we've got a nice tight base, we're retracting that scapula and we're doing no half reps. And what we mean by that is making sure when we row, we're really pulling our shoulders back with us and we're pushing our chest out as we do it. We're also trying to hit our belly button with each rep. This just makes sure, again, we have a nice tight angle with our elbows, but also it's just gonna be a lot easier to push our chest out. Now with the tight base part, we're just talking about breathing, okay? So breathe in and then breathe out. And that's just gonna ensure we're gonna hold this nice position as we row and try and make it strict and controlled 
as possible. Now, the last little bit I wanted to touch on was the difference between a pronated grip and a supinated grip. And if I'm honest, there's not a massive difference. The only difference you will find is you might just preference a few different muscles in comparison to the others. In terms of your hip pinch position, it will be very similar. In terms of your elbow position, it might just be a little bit different. And that's just because with a supinated grip, you will find that your elbows will be able to come tighter to your sides, which is why when you use a supinated grip, you might be just preferencing the lats a little bit more compared to your overhand grip or your pronated grip, where you'll be looking to preference the upper back more in the grand scheme of things, your traps, rhomboids, etc., etc. So ultimately, take a pick to whichever one preferences the muscles you want to work on or whichever one feels nice and comfortable for you. So well done. You've officially graduated the Don't Be A Dick with your Bent Over Road class. And now we're going to talk about the three dick moves that I see so frequently it flipping hurts. And if you're doing one of these, please make sure you correct it just for me because it really does hurt my soul. So the first dick move that I see most frequently is simply standing to upright. That's right, not really hip hinging at all. And all this does is shorten the range of motion. Plus, you're pretty much just shrugging the weight up. So there's not really gonna be any real lap work in the movement at all. And you're just gonna really overdevelop your traps, which if that's what you want, that's what you want. But you're not gonna be very strong with this movement. And quite frankly, you're just missing out on a lot of gains. It's a pretty simple correction. Make sure you hip hinge correctly get that back, back angle a bit better, look at the difference in that range of motion, and all of a sudden, you're gonna be getting a lot more out of your bend of a row, and yeah, you might have to lighten up, but drop your ego and sort it out, because you'll find you're gonna go a lot further in the long term, and you'll just probably have a better physique. Now moving on to deep move number two, and that's simply flaring your elbows out and pulling to your chest. Now there's actually nothing wrong with this one if all you really wanna build is a nice big set of rear deltoids and not really be able to build a big back at all. I'm guessing you clicked on this video to the fact that you wanted to build a bigger back, which means you need to make sure that your elbows are coming at 45 degrees, you're pulling them into your stomach, and you're nicely using them big muscles like your lats and your traps. So make sure the elbows are right and you'll be sorted. Now the final dick move I want to touch on is all about lower back pain and having a rounded back overall. This is where we ultimately need to go back to our hip hinge practice, making sure we can nail our RDL, making sure we're pushing that bum to the back of the room, we're loading our hamstrings all the time. But also, I would recommend not using a barbell because you're going to find that using dumbbells is going to give you a lot more freedom. Plus, it's a lot easier to keep your back straight when you start your hip hinge. So then you can actually just focus on performing your bent over over dumbbells with a nice bit of freedom while nailing that back position so you feel it in all the right places. Once you then get that right, once dumbbells feel comfortable and you start loading them up, you can then return to the barbell and find that your form should be overall a lot better and you can maintain that good straight back position. So I hope you found that video useful. I hope you fell in love with the bent over row just as much as I have. Uh, and ultimately you get it in your routine and you start building them back muscles up. After all, majority of people actually see us from behind before they actually see our face. So, you know, if you've got a good back, they're gonna think you're way better looking than you actually are. All I would say is make sure you perform it correctly as always, sort them dick moves out, and uh, yeah, let's really move in the right direction, get that t-shirt size up. After all, our back does cover up a big part of our body. So have a great day. Of course, if you liked it, like it. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, and I'll probably see you on the next one. Oh, and remember, don't be a dick.